Messieurs, vous avez la pression car vous avez une question. Comment on fait pour garantir une expérience You have a question. How do we guarantee that we'll provide standardized user experience on all devices Well, to answer this question and many others, we'll have to ask ourselves the question of what is Frogan's player when we actually use it. So, what I've shown you so far was not the Frogan's player version we are going to talk about now. It wasn't even a Frogan's player version that took into account what Véronique Benjamin uh, talked about just now. Hence, the slow pace because things are still under development. So, around this um, rectangular table, which is going to turn into a round table now, but we have Damien Arnaud, who is um, project manager for software development. Mathieu Tali is also project manager, manager working in software development. And guess what? Yang Wang also works as a project manager in software development. Why so many people in software development? This is what they're going to tell us. Over to you, Damien. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Hello, good evening. A quick reminder of what Frogan's player is as a piece of software. So very quickly, Frogan's player is a piece of software that allows navigating from one Frogan site to another. It's been developed by OP3FT and OP3FT is in charge of disseminating it through the get.frogan's site that Pierre-Emmanuel talked at the beginning of this conference. This piece of software will be available on the largest possible number of operating systems, like for desktops, you have uh, Linux, Windows, Mac, OS X for mobile devices, Android, the uh, Mac system, etc., etc. Frogan's plan is available for free, as we say on the internet, when it's for free, the consumer pays in the end. This is not the case here. OP3FT does not collect any personal data. There is no ad, no commercials, neither uh, embedded in the software or popping up on the get.frogans site. So that's a very brief reminder of what the Frogans player software is about. Now, to tell you about what happened since 2004 with regards to the Frogans player, because the Frogans player was created back in 2004 for Linux, Mac, OS X, or Windows platform, and it was encoded as a proof of concept. These are kind of demos to show that your project is feasible. It was done using a certain language back then in, 20, in 2004, and when mobile devices boomed, in 2008, we decided we'd change the language to encompass mobile devices and desktops. So between 2008 and 2011, we worked extensively on what the Frogan's player would be on mobile devices. This is the stage that we talked about. This is when the word stage emerged. There were many parks and R&D for the mobile application, and we added functionalities to the plan. We also organized quite a few conferences, and I'd like to speak about the last three ones. The FTC5 that took place in September last year, Véronique told you that this was the first time you could use the first player to pass 
the language and display it. And for us, it's when the first player was released for Windows and Mac OS X. Then FTC 6, that's when the Linux version appeared or was made available and the HTTP network also appeared at the same time, just to give you an idea of what was available. Then during FTC 8 we had the view source that was demonstrated earlier, which is very handy and in much demand with uh, developers, especially for dynamic sites because you don't necessarily know exactly what kind of code was generated by the server, so it's always interesting to be able to see it. And FTC 7 was the moment when we offered the opportunity for Frogan's addresses resolution. Okay, that was the overview. Over to you, Matthew, for the rest. Well, I'm in charge of the FPRT part. FPRT is an acronym that stands for Frogan's Players Run Time. FPRT is the multi-platform part of the player as opposed to the platform specific or dedicated uh, part of the player which is developed by Young. So FTRP is multi-platform and as Damien said everything is written in C language so it's a C library so FTRP is like a conductor with an orchestra. It analyzes interactions and communicates with the different modules in the software and anticipate the uh, uh, result expected by the user. So you have FSDL, the network part and address resolution. This is also where part of the user's data are stored like preferences, favorites. It's FBRT multi-platform that takes care of all this. So since the last conference and in parallel to FSDL um, evolution, we had this part of the player also evolve with a simpler, more robust architecture. During this, let's call it revamping uh, period, we started thinking about uh, maintainability, having an architecture that could integrate new modules in the future. <coughs> and then most of the revamping exercise consisted in revamping the API of FPRT, everything which has to do with display and with the interactivity of the site. Why did we move to GEI? Well, because we refocused on the core business of the Frogan's player, which is to resolve a slide. And all the display part on the GEI side, they have more specific tools to achieve display. And it's with the revamping of API that we managed to standardize everything which is part of the desktop core business, so that's the current player actually, with the immersive player on tactile, on touchpad devices. But all this is part of the switch, shifting all this interactivity uh, uh, matters to GI allowed us to uh, to be more accurate, to make life easier for the for the user, to to send out clear messages. So we worked on the messages, and all this part is going to help speed up our next step i.e. to speed up the release for mobile devices. And the next step, availability on mobile devices, access to GEI, is gain in flow, uh, 
rendu et nous. Uh, so FSDL they focused on the rendering and we focused on seamlessness and fast flowing. For, so then for the parts which are specific to every individual platform or device, I'm going to hand over to Young. Hello. Good evening. So let me tell you about the GEI part. So it's the graphical user interface. In the Frogans Player app, that's an app layer that takes care of the man-machine interface in the Frogans Player. The GUI layer, which is 100% supported by the environment of each individual device, i.e. it protects the native aspect of each device, but it also protects user experience on each device. The GUI layer is written in the native language of each individual device. For instance, if you have a device operating on Windows or Linux, it's written in C++. On Mac OS and iOS, like an iPhone or an iPad, it's written in Operative C. And on Android, you have the dedicated language in, on a Windows phone, it's going to be in c -sharp. So, as Matthew said, we revamped the uh, FPRT, Frogan's Player Runtime, and that's a bonus for the GUI, because with this new approach, the software hands over all everything that has to do with user interface to GUI. And this new approach is far more efficient in order to interact with the user. The second bonus is that this new release is merging different modes, like desktop and immersible. And this shows that GUI is ready to roll out the mobile version for the public at large. And if we have time, during the next conference, I can take more time to explain to you how this is possible with the GUI that works on any available device. Well, thank you, Young, for this contribution. So now I'm going to talk about the this transitioning period that's leading us to the spreading phase. So during this transition phase, we are currently working on a f what we call a public Frogan's player that should include, and the list is not exhaustive, by the way, but it should include the mobile part that Young just uh, talked about. There would be gateways to connect with the outside world. So you have the leap to Frogan's to link the web and Frogan's player, but not just the web, it's the outside world at, in the broad sense of the word. Then you have the FSDL buttons to create links between Frogan's player and the web or Frogan's player and emails. These are the first gates that we are envisaging at the moment, but in the future we could add many, many more, many, many more gates or gateways. What we also add, or what we also want, is to increase the 
coverage of the angle for graphic interface so far, uh, the language uh, interface. So, so far it was just in English because it was created by developers and all developers can read and write English. But this is not what we are requiring from individual users. So we are going to open to a very large number of languages. There are 179 languages in the world, so that's quite a large number. So we will add new languages as we release new versions. There is also a new UCSR network to support what we call TLS i.e. that's the lock when you go to a website. Thanks to this new network, you can have secured connection to your so Frogan's site. Secured meaning that no one will be able to read the content uh, running through the network. And then there will be various functionalities that we'll add. We can mention a few uh, right now, like um, uh, managing favorites, recently visited sites, we'll have the configuration of the Frogan's player just to, you know, select the language, the country, and quite a large number of additional functionalities. Everything lies in the three dots at the end of the slide. That's where important things are going to be done. Okay, well, thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you, Young. Thank you, the three of us. There was a question asked without any mic. The answer is, so far we can't communicate on a date. What's for sure is that as soon as we have functionalities, we will provide them to the community as we have. But if you want to be posted about the release date, register on the mailing list, the announcement mailing list, so that as soon as we can post the information, you get it. You get it. Okay, any other question or any other information? You were asking about the standardization of the experience as a user, I guess you had the answer. I don't know if you're convinced by this answer, but Damien, you're an architect. And of course, thanks to Young and Matthew's teams, because OP3FT is a team, and you just see a few representatives, and they represent the majority of developers, but there are other people working very hard on all this. So you just have a small part of Frogan's player, which is cross-platform. And on the other side, you have Young. And the different GUIs need to find a way to collect the user's action, which FBRT can then interpret in a standardized way, whatever the platform. We've shown it on on a mobile phone using the pad, we've showed it on a computer using the mouse, and of course we are open to any other navigation system as long as it's available on all platforms. If there is no further question, thank you gentlemen.